Hey there, it's Father Richard Gonzalez. Here we are right in the middle of the second week of Easter, the second week of the Easter season. And within the context of the Mass, within the daily readings, especially from the first readings, we see uh, the expansion then of, of believers, the expansion of, of the Church that is taking place in the Acts of the Apostles within the Holy Scriptures. We see that how, uh, how the, the Apostles themselves, how they are just filled with, with holy confidence because of the Holy Spirit. How the Spirit of God has descended upon them, how the Holy Spirit of God has come within them, granting them the blessings, the graces, the gifts, the fruits of the Holy Spirit in which they need to evangelize the good word of Jesus Christ to all who are around, creating then the community of the faithful. Actually, the latter part of, of, the, of chapter 4, the Acts of the Apostles, the beginning also of chapter 5, we actually see some, some fresh terminology. We, we see the, the, the term assembly of believers, and we also see the term church. That is actually uh, the term for these newfound groups of people of Jesus Christ. We see again that how the apostles themselves, we see Peter, J uh, Peter and, and John and James and all the others, how they're going out and how through their testimony of word and also by action and great miracles that are taking place, that how through their testimony, there are so many people who are being fed, they feel good, uh, they, they're, they're, they're being healed and, and the sick are also being brought to them and the sick are also being healed. So much joy is taking place. So much, again, strength of the Holy Spirit is taking place and moving, not just within uh, the apostles themselves, but in the community. Again, this newfound community of the, the, the assembly of believers and also a uh, church. And of course, we see that how the religious leaders are, are also threatened by this. So we begin to see uh, so much of a, a, a battle royale that is taking place between uh, the religious leaders within, between the Sadducees and also the apostles. Because we see that, of course, you know, the Sadducees are looking back and they're thinking, hey, we got rid of Jesus. You know, he's no more. Ha ha ha. He's no more. So the, the problem is solved. So these guys are still around. Uh, what should we do? So the, the apostles are out evangelizing. So the best decision that the Sadducees can come up with is to arrest them. So they arrest uh, the apostles to silence, to go ahead and just uh, squelch uh, the, the, the word uh, being spoken, uh, the word of Jesus Christ within, within the town, within the city. And we see that in the middle of the night, how they weren't in there all night long because the angel of God came to them and rescued them, opened the door, and how they were able just to walk out of the jail, how they were able to walk out of the prison, even though there were guards right outside the cell, even though there were guards at all entryways uh, into the jail and out of the jail, how the apostles were able to get, go ahead and walk freely away. And where did they go? Back to the temple area to go ahead and to begin again evangelization. And we see that how the Sadducees again are upset at this. So they bring the apostles back over uh, to them, uh, to the Sanhedrin, to, to the Council of Elders. And we see a, a, a wonderful debate that's actually taking place. And that how Peter and the apostles, how they are just filled again with the strength of the Holy Spirit, uh, with the wisdom and, and the grace and, and the fruit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit that has given them the courage and the wherewithal to actually stand proudly and strongly before the Sanhedrin, before the council, and, and make their point. We see that how they're, they're not willing to, to be silenced, uh, to be silent. So we see then that how one of the Sadducees, one of the elders, he pretty much, he brings uh, some of the other leaders to the side, and, and in a nutshell, he's saying, hey, let's just let these guys go. We've seen this kind before. Uh, it's probably not going to last. So let's just go ahead and let them go, and what harm can be done? Let's just go ahead and let them go, and history will never remember them. So they're set free. And of course, what happens? They continue to evangelize. And these little assemblies of believers, this little church begins to grow and grow and grow. And so much so that we see that how the apostles begin to realize that just as Jesus had commissioned them at the Holy Thursday, what we call the Last Supper, the institution of the Eucharist, as Jesus had commissioned them to go out to proclaim his word and to serve the people of God, they began to realize, the apostles began to realize 
how they're going to have to do the same as Jesus did for us, we will also do for others. So we begin to see the beginning right here of apostolic succession. As the apostles then recruit or commission or ordain other men, likewise, to go out and spread the word of Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing that is taking place within these readings, within the second week of the Easter season, as we are beginning to see the growth of the early church, and we are beginning to see the succession, the apostolic succession of these beautiful apostles as they're passing on what has been given to them and trusted to them by Jesus Christ, and in turn entrusting his church to these other men. What a beautiful thing that is. And here we are, over 2,000 years later, and the church continues and is strong and it is beautiful. And thanks be to God that we do have the priests that we have. And even though, yes, they are human and they may have their faults at times, thanks be to God that they continue to do what they do. Let us pray for them as they then will continue to, we pray, that's, that they may continue then to open their hearts, to open their lives over to the Spirit of God, who has entrusted them with the Church of Jesus Christ. And as we see then, within these beautiful readings, how the Spirit of God has entered into these men and granting them the holy confidence, giving them the beautiful wisdom, the wherewithal to pronounce the words of Jesus Christ, in word and in deed. How then have we received Christ's words within our heart? And how are we then following his guidance, his word, his light within our lives? Despite the obstacles, despite what may be taking place around us that may make us nervous, how courageous are we with the strength, the light, and the word and the presence of Jesus Christ? within our lives. May God bless you today, tomorrow, and always, and I'll see you real soon.